<sighs> I did it again. But this time, it went like this. Everybody get your uh, Geography Now merch like this Geography Now mug at geographynow.com. Not selling out if it's your brand. <gasps> this is weird coffee. So context, this has happened to me in the past and quite frankly, it seems to be happening a little bit more and more these days and I am not complaining. But as you guys know, once every so often I get invited by some organization or company that wants me to travel and be a guest speaker or a content creator to document my discoveries with wherever they're making me travel to. And then I share it with you guys. You know, I almost always say yes to these opportunities because you know, free travel. So one day I got a call and it was from this guy named Charles who's like the boss man of something called called MTP and it was like, MTP Summit? What's that? Well, that stands for Most Traveled People. That's our organization of 30,000 people that want to travel to every country in the world. Of course, we love your videos, and so we would love you to come to our summit meeting in Equatorial Guinea this year. Equatorial Guinea? I've never even thought about that country in my immediate travel plans. <laughs> Whoa. Great. Are you in? Wait, this sounds too good to be true. Are you guys paying for the flights and accommodation? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. I've been scammed before. I don't want to be scammed. This is not a scam. Okay, then I'm in. Oh well, great, we'll see you there. So first off, a few side notes for those of you that know nothing about Equatorial Guinea, and if you didn't watch the Equatorial Guinea episode. The country is one of the most unique places in the world. For one, as a former Spanish colony and one of the only few in Africa, it is the only Spanish-speaking country in Africa, and quite frankly, the Spanish they speak here, in my opinion, is very clean, clear, and comprehensible. I've had more difficulty understanding Mexicans, and I was taught the Mexican dialect in school. Second, the country has been ruled by President Teodoro Ubiano, Nguema Mbasogo since 1979 when he overthrew his uncle, the former president, in a coup. That means to this day he is the longest serving president in the world. The opinion of the president is interesting. You will see his picture everywhere on streets, billboards, and people even wear shirts with his picture on it. Most outsiders might look at this as a harsh dictatorship. However, if you talk to the people and ask them, the general consensus is as long as he develops our nation and doesn't piss us off, we can live with his rulership. Plus, we're kind of used to it by now. It's complicated, whatever. And here's the other thing. Getting into Equatorial Guinea hasn't always been historically easy for most people outside of the continent. See, in recent years, post-pandemic, Equatorial Guinea actually took the title of Africa's least visited country, with an estimated number around only 6,000 non-ECAS union foreigners entering annually. This is due to a number of factors, such as strict visa restrictions that require lots of paperwork and time. In addition, for the longest time, the country has had a very closed-off political system that can change policies on a whim, so sometimes you can never even be sure even if you have all your documents in order. Luckily, MTP is one of those organizations that has the hookup. And by that, I mean, literally, they had friends tied into the government, so literally everyone that signed up for the summit was directly vouched. And when the government vouches you, it's gonna be a treat. See, despite having a super small population of less than 2 million people, the country usually ranks in the top 10 oil and hydrocarbon producing nations in all of Africa. And this is partially thanks to the fact that they have a weird sovereign layout. See, Equatorial Guinea is split into two parts, the insular region, or the islands in the Gulf of Guinea, made up of Bioko and Anabon, and the mainland part on continental Africa, known as Rio Muni. Despite being disconnected as an island and 13 times smaller than Rio Muni, about 80% of the population lives on Bioko Island, which holds the capital, for now, of Malabo. This is the part where most foreigners visit when they say they've been to Equatorial Guinea. Otherwise, very, very few venture off to the mainland, or even more rare, Anabon Island. One reason Bioko is so important? Well, the EEZ surrounding it is rich in oil and gas fields within the designated blocks, specifically the largest one, the Alba field, just north of Malabo. This means Bioko is essentially the money maker of the country. It's where most of the commerce, trade, and shipping goes through as well. In later years though, this was kind of seen as like a slight issue because while small Bioko was thriving, the mainland was just kind of sitting there waiting to develop. And this is where things get interesting. In 2011, it was announced that the country would construct a new capital on the mainland in the town of Oyala, later named Ciudad de la Paz, 
Paz, or the City of Peace, and in 2017, they formed a new province named Jibloho, specifically just for the capital area. To access all of this, they built a whole new international airport, named after the president, in the middle of the jungle, about 22 miles, 36 kilometers to the east. If you zoom in on the map, you can see the progress of development with large leveled plots of land ready for building new commercial and residential districts. And if you zoom out, you can see the numerous new highways that have been paved and built connecting the coast at Bata to virtually every other corner of the country. So as you can clearly see, much of this was done with the intention to incentivize citizens to get off Bioko and move to the mainland, you know, to populate it and cultivate the wide swaths of unused land that they now have access to. And I was among one of the first few foreigners allowed to come in, see it, and document it. Here we go. Malabo. This is Malabo International. It is empty. Nothing is open. All the seats are empty. Whew. Okay, the bathroom's not bad, okay. Okay, the room's not bad, all right, okay. Oh, it comes with a robe, okay. Here's my view, just uh, the coast. Not bad. So my uh, gorilla pod lost the uh, clippy thing, so I can't use it anymore. <sighs> One thing after the other. So what does it feel like to be in Equatorial Guinea? I'd say it kind of feels like being in the Dominican Republic, but it's like pure Africa, not Afro-Caribbean. So just walking down, uh, you know, Hassan the Second Street, Main Street in Malabo, uh, a lot of cool stuff. Crazy thing is the tallest peak is right by the main city. It's right there, Pico Basile. Okay, this is the last place I would have expected to find an embassy for the sovereign military order of Malta. It's, it's legit. So I got my grocery haul, lots of water. I don't know why, every country I go to, they have cheap mortadella. This is 750 frogs, that's like $1.20. You know, some plastic cheese to go with it, make a little protein wrap, you know? I don't know what it is about mortadella. Every country has cheap mortadella. Anyway, good, I'm good to go. Now I gotta work on the USA episode while I'm in Africa. But alas did it, Malabo is just the first chapter of this journey. The actual summit would be held in Rio Muni. So I would have to get my last few kicks of this cool town before going back to the airport, getting back on a small jet, heading out to Bata on the mainland, and then taking a bus ride all the way to the new proposed capital, Ciudad de la Paz. On the mainland, Bata. Very few people outside the country have been able to witness this. This is Ciudad de la Paz, or at least what is trying to be Ciudad de la Paz. Much of it is still empty and being constructed in the deep part of the Equator Guinean jungles. For now, most of the roads and buildings are empty, and everything is ready to be filled up. Crowning the new city at the edge of the main road, Avenida Justicia, lies the new presidential palace building, an enormous compound that will be used for government administration and the president, of course. I was very lucky to be given supervised permission to get this drone shot and document the building process before the city opens up en masse scale to the public. 
public. You have no idea how cool this was. On the south side of the city lies the hotel I would be staying at, the Grand Hotel Jibloho. Built in a style not only to shine glory on the country, but also to highlight all of Africa as displayed by the exterior aesthetic. This hotel is essentially a presidential passion project intent on becoming one of, if not the highest ranking hotel in all of Africa, or at least that's what they claim and hope for. It comes with a domed convention auditorium, a golf course, helipads, pool, spa, gym, luxury cafeterias, and the interior is adorned and embellished with amazing, beautiful local artwork and statues and carvings. I've been lucky enough to experience a few five-star hotels before from other sponsored trips, but I have to say this may have been the best I've ever experienced so far. So, this is the hotel. <laughs> There you go, yeah. This is Sam. This is Rihanna. <laughs> She's a celebrity, everybody loves her. Yeah, I think I'm lost. So with that, I did what I was invited for. I completed my little presentation at the summit. It was fun. I talked about my experience with Geography Now. However, the journey was not over. There was still one last piece to the Equatorial Guinea experience to complete. Annabon Island. In order to go there, though, we would have to get on a government-sanctioned private plane as there are no regular commercial flights and access to the island is incredibly limited, even for locals. Here at the uh, Mbasogo Airport, this is not a very common thing that people get to experience. It's not even open to the public. Very few people get to go out of this airport that's our flight and uh yeah it's kind of still under construction they're trying to develop this place but we're one of the few foreigners that actually get to experience this As the only part of the country south of the equator, Annabon Island is the most remote, isolated, and least visited part of Equatorial Guinea. The locals told us it had been over half a year since they had seen a single foreigner. Occasionally, government officials and shipping containers might stop by, but all services are infrequent. The locals here actually speak a Portuguese-Spanish Creole called Annabonese, as they actually have more interaction and commerce with their closest neighbor, Sao Tome Island, about 110 miles northeast of them. Aside from the complicated past and incidences that have occurred, there's still this inexplicable sense of vigorous enthusiasm you feel when you step on the island. I did it. I made it here. Fewer people have had access and seen this place than North Korea. And it is quite a place to see. Not far from the main town, San Antonio de Palais, is Pico de Fogo, an extinct volcano with a caldera lake called Lago Masafim. It takes about an hour to hike up there and it is stunning. Going up to Lago Masafim. So we made it. Uh, what? Made it. To Lake Masafim. Overall, the only negative takeaway I had from this place was that I didn't have enough time to see enough of it. If I could, I wish I could have spent at least a week here. Gonna be honest, one of the most memorable travels I've ever been on.
know, it's funny. I started geography now because I wanted to learn about the world because I wanted to see it. But the weird catch 22 is I spend more time in this studio talking about the world rather than going out to see it. But now that all the country episodes are coming to an end, a chapter is closing, and I feel like now I can really start to do what I want to do. And this is just a taste. And you'll just have to find out. Stay cool. Stay tuned.